Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. Um, got some jobs out here I'm getting ready to start on that I got to jump on and get done. And wanted to show you, this is some of the more typical things that, that always comes into my shop that I have to work on. I haven't showed them yet on video, so I thought I'd go ahead and throw these in there. But what I got is, uh, this is an M-Bell off an electric motor. It, uh, this is for a 208 bearing. And the bores, you know, they get wallered out, they get worn. So I have to uh, bore these out and install a sleeve, bring them back to size. Very common job. Just uh, usually every time you get an M-Bell, it's shaped a little bit different. And you got to figure out how you're going to chuck it. And this one here is going to be kind of hard to to grab on here because of this large radius around the outside of the corner. And what I might end up having to do is make me a little jig plate that'll bolt on right here out of some piece of rounds. I got some rounds down there I think I can use. And you know just drill it where you can bolt a bolt a plate on there. I, I don't know yet. We'll I'll, I'll figure it out as I go. This right here is another job problem. This is an impeller. And I've already rekeyed it once where the uh, you know the key was wallered out, but I believe what they're doing is uh, they're they're putting this on a different motor because I thought when they first brought it it was wallered out, but it's not. It's actually a 15 16 bore, and they want it for a 7 8 bore. So they're uh, I think he did say he's getting a new motor, so that's probably what it is. The, the new motor's got a 7 8 shaft. So what I got to do with this is bore this out and this is how I'll, I usually fix these. I'll bore these out and I won't go all the way through there. I'll go and leave a shoulder in the back and what I'm going to do is machine a bushing that will install in there and then bore it and key it to size. So that's what I got to do there. Uh, I found this piece of bronze here. I may end up using that for the uh, for the bushing for that in there. This, this sleeve is going to be for this, I'll have to find a piece of stock and, and make one. But uh, I did check this and I, I used my chart. It's uh, it's almost a thousandth oversized. This is one of my charts that I made up from, uh, you know, this one's from SFK bearings. There's, there's all your your uh, 6200 bearing sizes for your shaft fits and your uh, bearing housing fits. This is your 6300, which is all the dimensions are, are typically the same thing. But I go off of this chart. I've got a few of these charts like this that I that I made up, and that's what I use to uh, check the fits on uh, shaft and housing fits. So I got those two to do, and I got another little job here that I got to try to jump in. Also, it's for this carburetor, and uh, my buddy John over Turn One Performance, he brings me stuff that I that I have to work on, and this little piece right here this is just some o-rings that I that I stuck on there those don't really go on there but see there's another one here and this one went right here and this thing has gotten really hard and and uh, dry and cracked and won't stay on there so he asked me could I make something like this and somehow fit it on here so that's my next challenge is uh, making something like this and fitting on here there was there was a groove in this thing and I found a little tiny o-ring and slipped it on so I'm gonna attempt to allow that o-ring to do the sealing on the part that I make and possibly have two little tiny set screws that might go in there and tighten up on that on this little boss here so we'll see so that's another little job I got to do right there I don't know if it'll be all included in this or not but I'm just uh, this is what I got to work on. I thought I'd just throw it all together for you to see. So I'm uh, I got to get started here, and I'll I'll show you what I'm doing along the way with with some of these repairs. All right. All right. Just giving you a quick update. I can't fit this in my chuck over in the Monarch. It's just uh, too much radius there to chuck it. My my chuck jaws won't open up big enough without hitting the waves. So. Also, the jig plate method ain't going to work because the holes here are so close to the uh, to the bore, the bolt's just going to get in the way. So, what I'm going to do, this is machined here, and this should be machined true with the rest of it on the inside there. you got a nice machined bore here. 
So what I'm going to do is make a, a jig. I found a little piece of stock here. I'm going to chuck this up and I'm going to machine this to uh, sit against this machine face here. It's going to have a boss that's going to register here on this board. And then I'm going to have it drilled and tapped so that I can just, once this machine, I can stick the end bell on there. And uh, I just got to, you know, I'll, I'll have, I got some bolts. I'll, I'll use a bolt. I'll have it tap, and I'll stick some washers in there and run the bolt through and pull it up against that. And the, the bolt shouldn't interfere with my boring because I'll, I'll use my angle bar to get in there anyway. So that's, uh, that's how I'm going to go ahead and get this thing set up. I'm just test fitting the, uh, the end bell on this little jig that I made. I haven't got it drilled and tapped yet. That's the piece. Uh, I've got it spun on there. It's pretty snug, and that bolt will pull it up nice and flat. Right now it's just sitting on there. I think that's going to work pretty good for me. I'm just getting ready to tap this hole I wanted to show you because this is what I was talking about in just my last video uh, last night. But there's my spring loaded center. I got my granddad's tap wrench and it got me a nice fresh uh, half 13 green fill tap. And I'm going to go ahead and tap this hole using the uh, spring center here. Spring center will keep that thing straight for me while I can use both hands to uh, pull the tap wrench here. Alright. That's it. Just wanted to show that off since I was just talking about it. Get her mounted up on here. A couple of washers that I grabbed. nice and solid. I guess I don't need to go any further. It's starting to bend the washer there. But it ain't, it ain't going to be very heavy cutting on this. That's why that, something like that, it, it'll work fine. Looks like it's running pretty true. I can see the face. I probably got about 5,000 run out on the face, but I think that's going to be close enough. That's, I'm not going to worry about it because it's, uh, it's in line with all that machine work that was done from the factory on this thing. I already got my tool dip set and uh, made a light pass through there and I'm about to make another one. I can't take a lot out of this thing because those bolt holes are so close to that board. Still got a little meat there. I think I'm gonna take another 50. All 
I got a board to the size that I, that I want. I'm real close to those ball holes, so I'm not going to take any more out. I just uh, touched off and took 150 thousandths out of the total. So now I got to go over here and, and uh, rough me in a sleeve. Found this piece of bronze I'm going to use to make this sleeve. Just getting it roughed in now. sleeve made there it is there and I usually give it three four thousandths clearance you see it goes in there nice and what I do because I made it a slip fit this is how I lock them in there I use a Loctite 680 and you always coat this real good you know your both pieces coat them both really well and that stuff will hold it it's not going to come loose the only way that stuff breaks is if you uh, you take a torch and you burn it out of there. And you don't have to use primer on the uh, bronze because it's a uh, considered an active metal. Put me a line in there. Just coat it real good. Make sure you get all the all the surfaces uh, coated with Loctite. Now I'm going to do the same thing to the sleeve here. Just make sure you use clean hands too. I always clean my hands up before I start doing this Loctite. You just don't want like oil and grease getting on everything. I'm just making sure that it's coated really well. Got a good layer all the way around it. Kind of give it a little bit of a twist when you go in. Coat it that way; it'll it'll roll around and coat itself real good. But it locks really fast. I can't even move it now; it's already locked in there. But I'm going to give this a few minutes to uh, to lock in there good, and you know, once it does, it'll be locked good enough where I can finish the machine work here.
All right, I'm about 15 thousandths away from being the size. I'm just trying to sneak up on it. The, uh, my size that I'm trying to hit is three inches, 0.149 and six tenths. I got real lucky on that one. I'm at 149 and seven tenths. <laughs> That's right there in the tolerance that I need. That's uh, 149 and six tenths. 149 and six tenths is the minimum, and the maximum is uh, three inches. 150 and three tenths. So I'm within that range there now. I'm just gonna always double check it though. Okay, I got a couple tenths difference there. I'm showing uh, showing six tenths that time. What I'll probably do is just uh, I'm just going to hit it really quick and light with my uh, gray Scotch Bright, and uh, that'll be it. I got a chance for this edge, and I'll be done with it. Yeah, that's it. I uh, I hit it with my Scotch Bright just to kind of scuff it just a bit, and it, uh, took another tenth out of there, so I'm comfortable with that reading. take it out and put it on the bench. There it is. All right, I'm getting ready to start on this one here. I got the end bell done. What I'm going to do, what I'm showing you real quick, this is an expanding mandrel that I have stuck in here. This is one of many that I have. Uh, here's like another one here. That one looks too big. So, <clears throat> what I'm going to do first is I'm going to set this up in the Victor and I'm going to turn me a really light turn true spot right there. That way I have an area on this OD that I can indicate that's true with that bore in there. It's going to be a little bit tricky to chuck it up and try to indicate that bore. I got two keyways in there. You got a little bit of wear, and uh, you got a good machine face to bump it through here. And I just need something right here to, to indicate the OD. So that's that's what I'm going to do first. All right, I had to kind of uh, change game plans here. It didn't. It wasn't working out the way I wanted to on that expanded mandrel. I stuck it in here and, and spun it indicated and the uh, the mandrel itself has got a little bit of run out in the center which I don't like so I decided to just uh, use my three jaw and chuck it back here you know on the seal ring area there's still a nice machine spot right there that the chuck jaw is grabbing and uh, just bump this face true I've got it within a thousandth of an inch and it's it's running nice now I feel more comfortable with that so I'm just going to go ahead and bore it right here in the uh, Victor in this three jaw. So what I've done, I used my depth mic and I figured out what the stick out is here. And I got it wrote down. 
So when I, I'll bore this, and then whenever I install my bushing, you know, I'll, I'll have it sticking out and I'll face it so that it's the same as this, this here. All right, there it is, bored out. I got it bored out the inch and a half. Here's a piece of bronze I'm gonna use here. I'm gonna go over there to the monarch, chuck this up and get this roughed in, and we'll bring it back over here and install it. Same deal as before. <clears throat> There's the bushing. Got a got a little bit of a slip fit. Gonna use my 680 Loctite. Get it in there good and then I'm gonna put some on the on the bushing here. That'll set up pretty quick. It's already it's already hardened up. I can't even move it now. But I'm gonna give that a few minutes to set, and uh, I'll finish the machine work here. And you might be wondering if I'm just gonna rely on that 680 to hold it. It would probably hold it fine. But usually, what I do in cases like this. You know something that's going to be spinning and that loctite having to hold it when i'm finished i'll go to the mill and i'll actually uh, drill and tap it right on the center line and uh, put me a set screw which what what we call is a dutchman so i'll have a set screw to uh to make sure that, that bushing never spins or pulls out of there uh, i'm getting ready to bore this thing out i had to change boring bars go to a half inch there to uh, fit in that hole also got to point out, my dad came down to see me. Hey everybody. He's down here hanging out. He's gonna watch me finish this job. Tell the smell the oil. All right. take my finished pass here. Got 12 thousandths to come out of it. Alright, I 
got it bored. Here's a uh, 7 8 Dumont brooch plug. It fits good, and it's uh, I actually got it bored 875. And the last thing I had to do is face this off. I got my depth mics, and uh, I'll just take some measurements here with my depth mics and, and get this uh, register here, the protrusion, the, the right length. I measured it before I started cutting it. should be it. Where it was at. Ah, I'm getting ready to approach this 316th keyway in here. I got her kind of lined up where I want opposite of the old key. Make sure you can see. Put a shim in and make one more cut for here. Alright, I'm getting ready to set up and uh, drill and tap it for the set screw. And what I got to do, I got to set up on parallel. I'm going to use my uh, center point here because it's uh, one inch. I'm just going to use that to line up on center and just lightly clamp this thing down. Shouldn't take a whole lot. All right, that should be about center. That's inch and a half. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to crank it over three quarters of an inch. That'll put me on the split line there. Just 
750. That put me on the split line. First thing I'm gonna do is use an end mill and just create me a flat spot there so that I'm level and then I'll do my drilling and tapping. this thing drilled and tapped. Using my EB Hansen tap handle and a 516 tap, my spring loaded center that I just showed you guys. That was a, um, like a, a uh, plug tap that I used there, and I'm just going back in with the bottom tap, go a little bit further. That one don't sound too good. I think it's a little dull. There. All right, I'm just about done. All right, I finally got these two jobs done. These were some, these were some more rush jobs that I had to do, and uh, had to had to get them knocked out today. Today's actually Sunday, and I've been spending most of the day out here getting this stuff done and uh hanging out with dad a little bit he came down to see me hope you guys enjoyed finally get to see a little clip of him he uh i think he's a little bit camera shy don't want to really get up want to get on there yet but uh he did say hello and i'm sure i'll have more opportunities for him to uh get there on the camera and and uh, maybe say a couple words to you but uh anyway i got this stuff done so this was, uh, you know, the end bell that I had to board and sleeve. This is something that I get all the time. I just finally decided to go ahead and show you one of them. And they, they, they come in all different shapes and sizes. So sometimes you can easily just chuck them in the fore jaw and indicate them. And sometimes you got to make it some kind of jig plate to uh, be able to swing them in the lathe. And then this is the impeller that I had to modify. And this is something that I see quite often. A lot of times what they'll do, they'll bring these to us because the, uh, the, the bore gets wallered out, the key gets wallered out, and I have to, I have to do that just to fix the bore. But I believe in this case is what it, what it was. I know that was a 15-16 bore, and uh, 
you know, he wanted a 7H board and new key in there, so bored it out, made a bushing, installed it, and and uh, and it's ready to go. And that's a that's a common fix right there. Done done them quite a bit. So there's two more jobs done, and uh, I was I was happy to share them with you, and I hope you enjoyed watching me work, and uh, maybe give you a few tips here and there, guys out there trying to get some stuff done. So. Again, thank you for watching the videos. I, I hope you enjoyed them. Again, I always like making them and having fun with them. And I got more stuff coming. So just stay tuned, all right? See you guys around. Later.